These are not easy emotions to feel, but they're beautiful ones. Whether it's an emotion of hope or an emotion of grief that feels like it's never gonna end. In a moment, we're gonna begin the process of lighting candles, but before we do that, I want us to all sit for a moment with Travis's words. This idea that connection heals. And not just the superficial passing kind of connection where we constantly reaffirm to each other all of our various accomplishments or conduct business transactions with each other, no. What I'm talking about is the kind of connection that is deep and meaningful and genuine, that exposes our most vulnerable parts to the other person, that takes a moment to get really real about what's going on in our lives. That kind of connection is a basic human need we all need it in the same way that we need food, shelter, and water, whether we struggle with a chemical addiction or not. I have a, uh, a close friend, um, she's a neuroscientist and serves as the director of science on um, the board of Seek Healing, this organization some of us have been talking about. Her name is Dr. Wersman, um, and her research shows some pretty amazing things about opioid addiction. And the facts are this, our brains naturally produce opioid compounds. You've all probably heard of them before. Uh, if y'all have ever heard of something called endorphins, those feel-good chemicals that your body releases when you exercise, endorphins stand for endogenous morphine. Their molecular structure is very similar to pharmaceutical opioids, to morphine, and to heroin. And what the research shows is that not only do you release these natural opioids when you exercise, you also produce them naturally when you connect with another human being, when you form a social bond. You know, there's uh, moments where you have a really juicy conversation with your best friend or you're talking to your partner about something really deep and meaningful. There's a reason why those conversations actually feel good to have. It's because our neurochemistry makes them feel good. And those neurochemicals themselves are opioid compounds. This makes me think that this opioid crisis we're facing today isn't all a result of overprescription, although that did definitely make things worse. This overdose crisis is happening because as society changes, as social media changes, the landscape of how we interact with each other, as the job market changes, as automation affects how frequently we come into contact with each other as human beings, our brains are just simply starting to starve for those naturally produced opioids. For many, many different reasons that we could sit here and argue about all day long, we just don't connect with each other as often as we used to. And when we don't get that connection that we fundamentally need, we get sick, we get anxious, we get depressed, and we start to fill the gaps with either little compulsions or more serious addictions. And for those of us who've experienced trauma, that lack of connection can get compounded over time to show up in really dangerous IV drug addictions to synthetic opioids like heroin and fentanyl that replace the ones that our brains are supposed to be producing naturally. And now that's not to say that our world is falling apart, that technology or social media is inherently evil. These technologies create a lot of good in the world. What it is to say though, is that just like we make time in our busy lives for exercise and taking care of our bodies, we also now have to take time for connection to take care of our mental health. We have to be intentional and start getting creative about hanging out with each other, about doing things like this, sharing space, talking about our experience with each other. We have to start producing those natural opioids again by being vulnerable, by being present with each other, by listening to each other and listening in a way that's not just always planning what you're gonna say next. I really believe that it's this, this experience of community and connection that we came here to experience and share tonight, that this is the medicine that we all need and that if we get enough of it, we may just be able to stop overdoses from happening in the first place.